This week on Supercars Talk, I look back on the 2019 edition of the Bathurst 1000. Typically this part of the show, I'd uh, probably have a look at the news that's happened during the week. Um, I'm going to skip over that this week. Uh, there was obviously the big announcement that there will be a Sydney team next year. Um, and there's a few other silly season um, rumours that were uh, doing the rounds at Bathurst. I'm going to leave them probably uh, look at them a bit more in depth uh, next week because there's a bit to cover for this week. Something a little bit different in the telecast over the uh, weekend was um, they had the team principals press conferences were televised um, and there was a bit of an interesting moment on the Thursday one. Um, it was actually a bit of a fluke that I uh, caught this. Um, I've actually been busy at work lately and haven't had a chance to, uh, you know, watch practice sessions and things like that that I used to on Fridays. Um, I... Um, took a bit of an early lunch break on Thursday um, and sat down and watched a bit of the telecast and actually caught the uh, team principal press conference. Um, the, the interesting thing, they were having a bit of a go at each other about aero. Um, two of the people in the uh, conference were uh, Brad Jones and Tim Edwards. And um, Brad Jones had a rather strange reaction. Um, Tim Edwards uh, made the comment that we cut our end plates Penske had to manufacture new ones. Um, now this is referring back to, I think it was for Barbagello, where um, the four teams had to modify the, um, the end plates on the, the bit up here, on the end of the rear wing. Um, they had to modify those, make them a bit smaller. Um, and yeah, Tim, Tim Edwards said that they just cut them down. Um, Penske had to manufacture new ones. Um, Brad Jones gave him a bit of a strange look. Um, unfortunately, no one else kind of chased it up with any questions. I um, thought that was a bit of an interesting thing that, um, yeah, I'll probably never hear any more about it, but um, I'd be interested to know why Penske had to manufacture ones while um, Tickford could just cut theirs down. Um, I thought they were supposed to be the same. So over the weekend, uh, there's a few crashes in practice. Um, Macaulay Jones uh, didn't let us down and um, Early on in P1, um, in the cutting, had a bit of a mistake and um, bang into the wall. Um, what was interesting about that one was uh, when it went in, it actually popped the roof off the car. Um, and uh, they had to beat the old one into submission because apparently the teams don't carry spare roofs. Um, I mean, you probably wouldn't damage a roof very often, but, you know, to not have one spare one... Um, not sure about that. I would have thought, you know, it's something pretty flat, you know, could slot it in the truck somewhere. I'll, you know, who am I today? Um, a couple, a couple of the other big ones. Um, Yulden had a big one um, in practice too. Um, that car looked a bit on edge all weekend. So, um, yeah, they never kind of recovered from that. It just wasn't a good weekend for uh, Yulden and Dave Reynolds. Um, and they were probably one of the, the favorites heading into the race. Um, in P2 as well, uh, Jake Stecky hit the wall. Um, you know, not a, not a surprise for the young blokes in the wild card. Um, probably the, the other big accident um, over the practices was um, where in P5, um, Richie Stanaway went in over Skyline, um, which then wing cup avoiding Richie put himself into the wall. Um, both cars weren't damaged too bad and uh, both of them went on to qualify. So speaking of qualifying, um, it was a wet session and the first one of the weekend that didn't have a red flag, which was uh, quite surprising considering how wet it was. Um, Scott McLaughlin topped the session uh, with 227.6. Um, that's probably about 22, 23 seconds slower than what, actually 23, 24 seconds slower than what. Um, we're probably expecting from that session. Um, we, you know, I think it was Scotty and Heimgartner and um, a couple of someone else. I think ran at three earlier on in the day. Um, yeah, so we were expecting probably a high three, low four from that session. Um, big takeaway is uh, Dave Reynolds twenty second. They were three and a half seconds off the pace. Um, they were only just in front of. 
the um, the wild cards, which uh, Brody Kostecki, um, he was 24th, 3.9 off the pace. And funnily enough, uh, Alexander Rossi was 25th, 3.9 off the pace as well. So um, I, I was a little bit surprised at how well the um, the Americans did. Um, I've been joking all weekend, uh, calling them the Americans. Um, yeah, I know Hinch is Canadian, but, you know... Um, the Americans, um, yeah, for them to do in a wet qualifying session to do the same time as um, you know Brady Kostecki, who's got a lot more experience with these cars. Um, very good job, boys. And um, I also said that you were going to qualify Stone Muddles last, and um, Jack LeBrock did that. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Whether they've just been told. You know, you haven't got the seat next year. You're doing damage. You're paying for the car or something. Um, don't know. Didn't see him on the telecast at all. Um, and he was 2.3 seconds off Alex Rossi. It wasn't even, you know, like you could understand 2.3 seconds off Scotty. But 2.3 off Rossi. Um, he was 6.2 seconds off Scott McLaughlin. Um there's definitely more to it than that. Um, pretty much the usual kind of suspects were in the top 10, I suppose. Um, yeah, which leads us into the shootout, um, which was won by Scott McLaughlin. Surprise, surprise. Um, Mustard ended up second. Oh, and also, Scotty did a 203.37, which is a new record for the top 10 shootout. Um, getting pretty used to this. Uh, Chaz was uh, 0.4 of a second off. Uh, then we had Waters, who he made up five spots in the top 10 shootout. Um, he was the biggest winner, and the biggest loser was uh, Tim Slade, who went uh, a long way backwards. Um, possibly they got a little bit lucky in the wet session, because um, Percat dropped a couple of positions. Pasquale went up three, um, and a lot of the other guys kind of stayed around where they were. Um, it was, you know, it was good to watch. Um, one of those sessions, I suppose, we expected Scotty to uh, take the pole, and he did it. So, that's it. So, the start of the race, and um, all the hype and everything, we'd uh, been up early. Um, if you're anything like me, you're a bit excited, and uh, wake up early on Bathurst Day. Um, not the fact that I get up early for work every day and I just wake up at normal time. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it was kind of another delay. Um, you know, we get up, watch the warm up in the morning and then you've got such a long period of time before the start of the race. Um, in a way, I wouldn't mind those 10 o'clock starts again. Um, and then to make matters worse, um, the Kostekis, I think they had a, a problem with the, um, the air hose into the helmet, something like that. The, um, Dryas was coming into his helmet and he got uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, that was Brody. So um, they got the car back to the pits. The start was delayed um, and Jake got out to um, start the race. There was a bit of talk of Kurt, who's Jake's brother. Um, he's racing for Triple Eight in the Super 2 Series. Um, he's been, you know, spannering the car and things like that. Um, there was talk that if Brody was no good, could he jump in? I didn't think they were going to allow it, um, but they said as long as Brody's deemed not fit, Jake can jump in. Um, Brody was deemed fit, so off they went. Um, the start was delayed, I think it was about 20 minutes in the end. Um, it felt like forever when you were sat there waiting. Um, and then to make matters worse, on the first lap, uh, Slade thought, ah, I'll go around the outside of Scott Pye. Um, yeah, I haven't seen too many around the outside moves there. Um, Pye, you know, got up on the ripple strip and kind of bounced a little bit and boof, slid into the wall, day done. Um, not something you need to be doing on a lap one, but, you know, um, so basically the race didn't start until after 11 once we'd uh, got through that. So after the, uh, the delays in the start, um, we finally got going um, and then kind of nothing happened till lap 101. Um, I did actually, I, you know, I was starting to get one of those days like, 
this isn't, and it's going to be the tiniest little mistakes that, um, you know, cause this race to be won or lost. And I, I started, you know, making a list of the little things that had happened to certain cars, like, um, you know, 97, um, which is Shane Van Gisbert and Garth Tander, um, their door didn't close properly and Shane's driving down the road, kind of uh, trying to shut it. Uh, there, there were some interesting scenes. You know, some of these guys are struggling like hell to hang on and he's, you know, cruising around one-handed trying to shut the door. Um, Chas Mostert had a little bit of a stall in the pits. Um, Prema had a lock-up and lost a bit of time. Um, they pitted to change that tyre. Uh, Larko found the tyre and showed it to us and um, it was through to the belts. So they're quite lucky they stopped when they did. Um, Triple Eight had run wide at Murray's Corner. Um, you know, the, these are the kind of things that I was um, listing down. Uh, 97 and 12, um, which is Van Gisbergen and Coulthard, both of them had double stack um, in pit stops. And, you know, I was kind of, this is what the race is going to come down to. But, um, you know, then we had uh, Todd Hazelwood putting it into the wall. Um, <laughs> which uh, brought the field back together and uh, started to make it a bit interesting again. Um, unfortunately, uh, Todd ended up in the hospital, um, pulled a muscle in his neck, I think. Um, he's supposed to be fine for Gold Coast, uh, probably just precautionary stuff. But you could tell on the in-car, he was winded pretty bad. Like That, that was a pretty big hit. Um, not good for the young fella, not good for the small team. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see them back at Gold Coast. They, they should be fine. Um, then we had uh, Jake Kosecki put it into the wall on lap 114. Um, this is where the race changed a little bit because uh, Wing Cup jumped McLaughlin in the pits. Uh, I, I personally think that they this is probably where Wing Cup's fuel issues later on came from. I think they short-filled Wink Up to get him out in front of McLaughlin um, because there didn't seem to be any reason why the Penske stop should have been slower than the um, the Triple Eight stop. You know, all, all things being equal, um, as you know, not like that a sticking wheel or anything like that. So um, I think that probably could have been um, a race-winning or losing decision there. Uh, then a few laps later, we had um, Mostert and Waters slamming into each other again. Um, I, I mean, I like Chaz and I try and stick up for him, uh, but it, it seems that both of them were saving fuel. Um, Cam might have been trying to save a bit more than Chaz, and Chaz misjudged how much Cam was trying to save. Um, but what seemed really weird on this one, they, you know, he kind of, he went to go to the inside and then, oh no, I'm going to go to the outside. And then as he was, he kind of turned in early, it seemed, and kind of plowed into the side of him and, you know, the wheels jammed up and off he went. Um, yeah, Chaz got a pit lane penalty for it and, um, Cam was, you know, basically out of the race, so... You don't need to be crashing into your teammates. It's just, you know, the the first rule they teach you, isn't it? Um, they won't be teammates much longer, though, so crash into each other as much as they like next year, eh? Um, could be at different ends of the field. Um, so then the next one, we had um, Anton had a um, th throttle jam, and um, he had a big impact. Um, that one, that was pretty hard impact. Um, of course, we had more safety cars. Um, and then uh, Courtney had a, a big brush against the wall. Um, they kept going and um, quite successfully kept going in the end. Um, at that point, they were kind of, oh, they were, they were moving forward. But um, yeah, it was surprising where they ended up at the end of the day, considering, you know, where they started. Um we had um, uh, Rossi, they um, finally ended their day towards the end. Well, it wasn't ended, but you know, they, they, they'd run well all day. Um, I think they were up into somewhere around 16th at this point um, when they buried it in the sand trap. Um, then we had probably the biggest incident of the race. Um, safety car came out, 
Van Gisbergen, in the previous safety car, he'd come in and taken on extra fuel. So he had more fuel than everyone else at that point. And um, Coulthard actually backed up the field. He was effectively in third place. So Scotty and Jamie continued on and Coulthard backed up the field. So he didn't actually get caught double stacking behind Scott, which brought everyone back. Now... There's a couple of things here. People are saying that it cost Van Gisbergen the lead. Now, if Van Gisbergen wasn't going to stop then, yes, it did cost him the lead. If he, because he did stop, um, it actually, it probably worked out better for Van Gisbergen because everyone was held back, then Van Gisbergen didn't have to double stack behind um, Wink Up, which if, Coulthard hadn't backed everyone up, he would have had to double stack. So guys like, I think there's, Rick Kelly was one of the guys in the in the battle there. He would have come in, stopped and actually jumped Van Gisbergen in the pits, even though Van Gisbergen had to do a shorter stop because he would have had to stop behind uh, Wink Up. You know, the other guys probably would have still jumped him because of that. So, you know, it's, it's hard. And this is... It's stupid. All right, on the the Fabs's engineer, he said, he, I don't know where the safety car is. Use extreme caution. So, this is a bit. The safety car comes out. Well, you know, there's something there, and he's just gone and said, you know, I don't know where it is. You know, drive slowly. Use use caution. He hasn't said back up the field, so you don't have to double stack. I'm sure Coulthard knew, knew what was going on, but. This is where it's hard because then they say, oh, you're driving too slowly under, you know, when the safety car's out. Well, how do you define too slowly when there's an incident? So you can't say, oh, everyone has to drive at, you know, 100 k's an hour or something because, you know, at some points there will be an incident where, you know, and then your, your wording of your rule just becomes so wordy where, oh, but then at the incident and then you have to get back to a certain speed before, you know, a certain time past the incident and, you know, it's just junk. Um, so I don't know what they're going to, apparently it's going to be an investigation. Um, there's supposed to be some rule about five car lengths or something. Um, we'll see what comes of it. Um, at the end of the day, Great gamesmanship, if it's within the rules. Um, yeah, it didn't really affect Shane in the end. Um, yeah, I don't, it, it, I don't think it cost Shane the race or the lead or anything like that. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. Um, I'd like to hear your comments uh, down there, whether you think I'm an idiot or whether you agree with me or something. Um, I'm sure someone does agree with me. Um, Maybe I'll find that person one day. Um, okay, then we had um, Jacobson and Stanaway. Um, i just put this down to idiots being idiots. The, I don't know what's in these guys' heads sometimes. That was just... This is well, it's supposed to be the top level. Um, or the top level in Australia. And they're just crashing into each other down the straight, like, and then we crash into each other going through the corner and we both get buried in the sand trap, like, well done. Um, both of them might not ever drive next year and from things like that, I'm not surprised. Um, we saw Wink Up come into the pits um, and basically he'd been, I can't save enough fuel, so I I'm going to blaze ahead and come in and stop and hope that the others don't save enough fuel. Um, probably good strategy um, from that team. Um, just on that, I found it funny on that um, the Friday night show that they do and they have the drivers on and stuff like that when they, you know, um, I think it's only like Bathurst and um, yeah, they usually have a pit stop challenge in it, but I think because of the rain or they didn't do it this year. Anyway. Um, Chaz was on there and he called Jamie the hello darkness my old friend guy and um, if you um, if you don't know what he's talking about have a look at it on YouTube um, just search for hello darkness my old friend uh, wink up and yep it's a it's a great watch it's um, of 
all of the times that um, Dumbrell didn't get to win Bathurst because his teammate did some or made some odd decisions most of the time. Um, then right at the end, um, we had Jaime uh, clip the inside at Forest Elbow and um, straight to the outside wall. Um, yeah, I'd, I've been pretty hard on Jaime multiple times this year. Um, he did all right all weekend. Um, it, a lot of the time he was the lead Nissan. Um, he, got, he did a, a 203, a, it was probably 2039 or something, but he got into the threes in a Nissan. So that's pretty impressive. Um, and probably the way things are looking, um, no one else is going to do that in the future because they're probably not going to see him at Bathurst again. Um, it was nice that they pulled that car to the outside quickly um, the safety guard drove around quite slowly um, and then we got a one final lap shootout um, which yeah as much as they talked it up um, Scotty he got a little bit of a jump on Shane and that was kind of it what I found surprising was though Jamie couldn't have a crack at Coulthard um, and I would have th uh, uh, caught me um, Coulthard was in behind. Uh, I, I would have thought, you know, Jamie was, you know, while the other guys were saving fuel, Jamie was blazing away. Um, and to think Courtney was still saving fuel a bit, he was on older tyres, etc., etc. Um, and really his car's crap compared to the Triple Eight car. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, I thought Jamie was a lock for you know, at least the last step of the podium, if not probably, you know, going to be able to mow down, you know, Shane and um, Scotty. Um, but he didn't. And I'm surprised. So, um, Chas Mostert ended up fastest lap of the race, a 2.04.76. Um, that is flying. And considering the car was uh, damaged a bit um, from his little incident with his uh, teammate, um, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's, they're going quick. Um, yeah, don't want to hear about how GT3 cars go faster because they have no rules. Um, pass of the day. Uh, I d don't normally do this because, you know, there's not a lot of passes that, you know, we have the Bunnings power pass, power play. Um, no, there's, um, it was on uh, around lap 30. Um, Shane Van Gisbergen on Will Davison. So, you know, well, Davison's, you know, he's not a chump or anything. And um, going into the cutting, um, Shane just dove down the inside and made it stick. Um, and it's not an easy place to pass. Just um, ask Marcus Ambrose and uh, Greg Murphy about that one. Um, yeah, Shane did it. Great job. Um, so the, the results, um, obviously, Scott McLaughlin, Alex Bremer came first, you know, just caps off. A brilliant year for them. Um, 622 points head in the championship now, so pff, that's done and dusted. Um, we did see Coulthard's now jumped back up to third in the championship. Um, I haven't got the points here because who cares? Um, Scotty's basically got one. Um, 622 in front, only 900 points available now, and Wing Cup's over 900 behind in fifth, so out of the championship, uh, along with. Dave Reynolds and everybody else kind of thing. So um, pending, you know, probably death. Um, I would definitely not wish him that on Scotty. Um, it's a bit of a joke. Um, yeah, Scotty's got championship one. Uh, as I said, Shane Van Gisbergen and Garth Tander were second. Um, they did beat Wing Cup and Lounge. So I suppose my little prediction there was uh, right. And also, I did probably say that Premier was going to be a bit of the weak link in the team, and he did a brilliant job. He just, you know, that first stint was a little, um, but I mean, you know, he had the, the main guys kind of around him. Um, that second stint, he caught and kind of pressured Lowndes into a mistake and overtook him. Um, can't ask for more than that. I mean, <laughs> I would have thought, Lowndes and Tanda would have been the, you know, head and shoulders above everyone else. Um, Caruso did a really good job. James Moffat, again, you know, there's quite a few that did a really good job. Um, yeah, Prema, though, um, yeah, I, 
definitely invite him back next year. Um, then uh, Courtney and Perkins in third. Where did that come from? <laughs> they just <laughs> um, there's there's something about those Walkinshaw cars at Bathurst. Um, Pi ended up eighth. But it's usually Pi, like, you know, they have no pace all year and then Pi comes second Bathurst. Well, you know, this, this time it was uh, Courtney's turn um, to get on the podium there. It wasn't second, it was third. Um, you know, great effort from them. Um, Wing Cup was fourth with uh, Craig Lowndes. Dave Reynolds ended up fifth. Um, yeah. Again, they've been nowhere all day and then all of a sudden towards the end, they were looking okay. Um, and at one point, with the fuel strategy and everything the way it was going, um, they were supposed to be in the box seat. Um, and the other one that blew me away was James Golding at one point. They they seemed to be, um, I think they got up to about fourth or fifth. Um, might have even been third. Um, you know, and they, they were holding their own. You know, the, they had the pace there. And they were the best ones looking on fuel at that point. Um, they had a little mechanical gremlin though, and um, unfortunately they ended up 12th in the end. So um, we had um, the Sacrificial Lamb, uh, Coulthard and Tony Delberto in 6th. Winsbottom and Richards in 7th. They had a very anonymous day. Um, Scott Pye and Warren Luff, again, very anonymous in 8th. Uh, Kelly and Dale Wood in 9th. That times they were looking really good um they were another one of those ones kind of in the mix towards the end with goulding and fuel strategy and things like that um didn't quite come off for them but uh top nissen for kelly there um and uh then lee holdsworth um and thomas randall were in 10th um thomas randall did a pretty good job all weekend and um if you didn't see the um the thing on friday night um the kids got a lot of personality too. So, um, the 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 Murricans, um, they ended up nineteenth. Uh, Rossi and Hinch, you know, they they were going okay, and then obviously they beat you in the sand towards the end. Um, but both of them said they want to come back again. So you know, let's hope and let's hope Rog brings over a couple of guys, and you know, there's a bit more of this stuff happening because it's you know. It, it just brings a little bit of interest um, and I liked, uh, you know, I felt really sad for the Kosteckis on um, the warm-up lap when they pulled over. I thought, oh no, you know, because it, it's quite interesting. Bathurst over the last few years have, has lost a bit of that, you know. Um, we don't want to go back to the years where we have, you know, like the Bill O'Brien's kind of the once-year warriors that get in the way and Johnson, you know, has crashed in the wall on a teary moment and things like that. Um, but I like at Bathurst where you have these guys who, you know, they're not in the cars day in, day out kind of thing. You know, it, not everything's perfect, you know. Um, there, there's a bit of learning going on and things like that. Mistakes happen and you go, whoa, you know, they, they got themselves up to, you know, I think it was 16th at the time. You know, they're doing a great job. Um, and, yeah, I was, uh, it was good, you know, having the Kostekis there this year, um, you know, having a bit of a crack at it, the old kind of, yeah, we're going to go to Bathurst and have a bit of a crack, like, you know, they're not going to win it, but, you know, having a crack. Um, and, yeah, I was, I was a bit sad on that um, warm-up lap when I thought, oh, this might be the end of their day, but it was great that they got out going again, and um, unfortunately they ended up in the wall, but, you know, these things happen. So that's my wrap up of the 2019 Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. Um, big congrats to Scott McLaughlin and Alex Primer for the win. Um, normal kind of transmission resumes next week where I have some news and um, it'll be a preview for the uh, Gold Coast 600. Until next time, I'll see you later. Put away your inhibitions, let the beast in you just get loose. We all young, wild and